All right, we are back. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a real estate school call all about Deal Machine. And we are blessed today to have the founder, creator, uh, Mr. David Letko himself on this call. We're going to be talking all things Deal Machine. If you guys are uh, new to the community, make sure you check out the classroom area. Make sure you get into the calendar and um, sync that up with your personal calendar. We do weekly coaching calls on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Central. And then we usually have at least another call or two a week. This is one of those additional calls. Uh, love talking and promoting Deal Machine. It is one of my favorite real estate investing softwares. I have been a customer, a user, a philanthropist for Deal Machine for, man, probably going on like six or seven years. Uh, probably used Deal Machine to buy close to 100 houses at this point. Um, I've done a $100,000 wholesale deal from Deal Machine. I've used it to acquire dozens and dozens of rental properties. Uh, absolutely love Deal Machine. So this is uh, this going to be a good call today. So David, I didn't mean to cut you off. I wanted to hit that record button here for the audience. Uh, you had just said that, um, and of course, David is here today to fill in for for Matt, who you all probably know and have seen on a lot of these calls already uh but matt yeah, and i matt went and to I... high school together Did you no know way that? yeah we're both from st louis that's amazing uh yeah me and matt and uh, his partner vince we did a deal together it's probably been about two or three months at this point but it was a good size deal i think we we netted um about forty seven thousand on a wholesale deal dude that was crazy I, congratulations on that as well they definitely relied on you and appreciated you helping them Hey, it's all good, man. It's my pleasure. And anything I can do for Matt and Vince, I am here to help. And it was a win-win too. We got to split that 33, 33, 33. So we all walked away with, you know, damn near 15,000 bucks a piece. And, uh, you know, it was a great deal because it was in a good part of town. We had a lot of interest on it. Uh, but more importantly than that, it um, it didn't require us to buy the property before we sold it, which was really, really cool. We did have a couple couple dollars in double closing costs, but we were able to dry fund the double close. And for those of you that are new or don't know what that means, uh, the dry funding is essentially where you don't need private money or hard money or even transactional funding. Uh, you work closely with title companies and you end up using your end buyer's funds to buy the property directly from the seller. So we were just the middlemen there. And yeah, I think we netted like roughly 47,000, which is cool. So the title company lets you do that. It's uh, kind of like a double close, but you don't have to borrow someone else's money to do the first closing, right? Yeah, so it, it is a double close. It's just a dry funded double close. So there's two types of double closes. You have a wet funding double close, which essentially means you have to buy it first before you sell it. And then you have a dry funded double close, which means that you just work closely with your title company. Sometimes you have to get the permission from the buyers, but you know, it doesn't matter. Typically they're, they're fine with you, you know, bringing them a deal. Uh, but you use your buyer's money to purchase it from the seller. So yes, like you said, it does not require you to have, you know, any, um, any, any capital. Like we literally put down, I think $500 um, in earnest money and that's it. And, you know, it was a pretty pricey property. I think we bought it. Don't quote me on these numbers, but I think we had bought it for like 275 and then sold it for 325 give or take. Um, and, you know, had a couple thousand dollars worth of closing costs because when you do do a double close, you have to buy it and then sell it, even though you don't necessarily need your own money. Uh, but yeah, awesome deal. Awesome, awesome deal. Congratulations on that again. And that's actually the... It's a new thing for me. I've been in the industry eight years. I've not heard of a dry funding. So are those like, is it just based on your buyer, like willing to let you do that? Or, you know, or it's, like that's a great question. It's really, and this is just my opinion. So don't quote me on this, but from my experience, um, it's really more about just building a really rock solid relationship with your title company. Occasionally the title company will ask uh, that you get permission from the buyer um, but I've even had title companies that I've again, built great relationships with that don't care. Most of the time they don't care. It's pretty rare actually that they ask you to get permission from the buyer. 
Uh, typically speaking, you can't do this with like a hedge fund because they want you to buy it first before you sell it. But if you're just dealing with a private investor or just a private individual, oftentimes they don't know or they don't care. Um, you know, some of the more conservative title companies, at least here in St. Louis and I know around the country, they don't do them or they're not they're not big on them. But if you build a really good relationship with your title company, you make friends with them, you do a lot of business with them, they're going to basically just turn their head and they don't care at the end of the day. They just want more business, you know, yeah. so... But that's really interesting, man. I had not heard about that before, but it's and quite honestly, very I don't know if I, I'm not trying to take credit for for coining it that way or not. That's just what we've always called it. You know, it's like, do we have to fund this or can we double close without funding it? And, you know, I've probably done more dry double closes than I have anything else. You know, more more than assignments, more than actually having to buy them. Now, obviously, certain title companies, certain buyers will require you buy you buy them first. You know, assignments are great, but sometimes people, when you're, especially when you're making good profits, right? You're making 30, 40, 50, 80, 100K. Buyers aren't super happy that you're going to get that big chunk, big, big of a chunk. Um, so we'll, we'll try to double close to prevent any issues. Um, but, you know, assignments are great too. All the above. Yeah. All the above. It's awesome. So cool. Well, David, I want to respect your time. Let's try to keep this call. Maybe you're like around like 40 minutes, if that's cool with you. Um, sure. I would love, I, I met you, you know, by 10 times, give or take, maybe even a few more than that. But um, I, I'd love just, if if you don't mind, just really quickly, just telling us the story of how Deal Machine even came about, man. For sure. Well, I was working a nine to five job and it was for luckily like a small company entrepreneur. And I learned a lot about business from him. Up until that point, I had been working at another corporate job and just putting as much as possible in my simple IRA, Roth IRA, and uh, trying to max that out, you know, um, and that was my form of investing. So I was actually really confused when he had four or five rental properties and asked him, I was like, why'd you do that instead of your stock market investing? And at the time, I know the stock market, you know, had fluctuated a lot. I would look at it all the time. Um, and he's like, well, if you buy the property right and you um, rent it out, it's got a fixed rate mortgage. It's going to always cash flow and you'll also gain that appreciation over time. And I remember looking at his properties he bought like five years ago. And uh, I just remember feeling like, well, shit, if I was around five years ago, I, I would have bought those too, right? Because he bought them for half of what their value was. He lived in Carmel, Indiana, experienced a lot of growth in that area. And so I was like pretty determined that that actually seemed like it made sense. So kind of went looking for my first deal everything on the market listed on Zillow, it, you know how it says the mortgage estimate? Well, it was more than what I could see it would rent for, you know? So I was kind of scratching my head. I was like, can you even do this anymore? And I went to a meetup and uh, found some people that did wholesaling. And they're like, uh, yeah, you could definitely do this. We sell it to you know, rental property investors all the time. Uh, we make five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in Indianapolis for finding these houses for the rental investors and they do cash flow as long as you get a good deal. So we recommend you look around for rundown houses. So I started doing that at the time I was told to find a hundred rundown houses. So I would spend after work. I was kind of like slow because there's like an hour before the sunset after work. Uh, so over two months, probably added 40 properties, which is so slow. Like I was just, <laughs> if I did it all again, I would have tried to find 40 properties in like two days knowing that I really need to find like a few hundred, you know, but it happened that way. And I looked at one of the properties that I wrote down. And then two weeks later, or two months later, drove by it again. Somebody was actually, you know, renovating it. And I was like, dude, that's my property. I wrote it down. So <laughs> I went I to- I found uh, it first. Yeah, exactly. So I couldn't believe it. I went home, looked up the county record. I could see somebody bought it. So it had not even been- you know, that recent, cause it takes a month for that to update. And I was like, dude, they bought it for, you know, $35,000. I could have offered that much. I, that would have made sense, I think. And so, um, that weekend I decided I need to reach out. I hadn't even reached out to all these properties I wrote down. And so I wrote <clears throat> like handwritten, like postcards, I actually, uh, printed stuff on my computer. So it would have a picture of the house on it. And I, I thought if I'm going to go through all this trouble, 
I want it to stand out and be well put together. So they respond to me compared to somebody else's. So that's sure. what I set out to do and realize it took a really long time to put the match, the house photo I had with, with the right owner and address the right envelope. You know, I was like, dude, it took me like an hour to do five. Yeah. And so I also, at the time, this was 27, this was eight years ago. So yeah, it would have been like 2017 timeframe. You couldn't send mail in smaller increments than like 200. There just wasn't an option to send one off piece of mail. So that's why I was also needed to do it at home. But long story short, I made an app in a weekend because I had some development skills that was just a map. I could pin the house. It would tell me who owns it and have another company print the mail off for me. And that was something I created for myself. Six months later, the person who ran that meetup saw what I was doing with that and she wanted to try it. So just to let her try it, I put it on the app store for free. And then the mail would cost like two bucks. And uh, she's like, well, I'll spend a thousand dollars to try any new marketing method. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't even try to sell this thing. It's just for me. And so, but that's why I put it on the app store and it needed to have a name. So I called it Deal Machine. And uh, that is how Deal Machine started about seven years ago. Um, that that woman's name was Brittany Wicks. And uh, she came to Indianapolis once a month to buy 30 homes for her turnkey rental property company that she worked for called Alpine Property Solutions or uh, maybe that. Yeah. So they have a few companies. One manages, one sells the turnkey. But you get the idea, right? Sure. It just really opened my eyes to how this is an actual business that is worth spending a thousand dollars to try new marketing, to get an edge or try something other people aren't doing. Um, and then since then deal machine, you know, we've, we've evolved to help 10,000 people close their first deal in all 50 States over the last eight years. And we, we have previously made our name and been known as the best, you know, driving for dollars app that lets you look for the house, send the mail, have a picture on it. Um, get those mailers sent off. Um, but I would say it's it started to change in the last year that we came out with this unlimited contact info. Which has been a game changer. Thank you. I, I really truly believe it's it's better, not not just because of what you get back when you look up a property and you see the the phone number, but um, sometimes it's not matched right in, in any system. Any system. Uh, but what we're able to show you every person with that owner's name in the country. So you can just literally browse through the whole country and you'll find like they're there. The owner's there. Like it's all inclusive. It's like, it's not like there's somebody who's not on the, on the big database. So, um, and that helps close the gap for if things uh, aren't able to connect you to the owner um, based on the initial match. So that's why I say it's better, but that's the number one reason why people have come to deal machine um, in the last year, since we came out with that in November um, and then just a, uh, a month ago, we came out with people wanted to make calls through deal machine as well, since all that data was right there. So um, that's how we've evolved, why I started, why it's important to me. Um, and before this, I mean, I, I hadn't, I hadn't done my first deal, right? So I use it as well, like you, David, uh, to, take, to end up getting my first deal. That was back in 2017. It's awesome. And it's come a long way, man. You guys have all sorts of cool stuff. You had mentioned the unlimited data. Um, obviously send in the mail, not only can you use it on the mobile app, but you have the access to, you know, use it on a computer or an iPad. Um, I love the smart list features that you guys have. The dialer is really, really great. And that's new and I've been working awesome. Uh, we have moved over to using the deal machine dialer, uh, basically primarily outside of, you know, some other softwares that we had used in the past. And, um, we love it, man. Deal Machine is is amazing. So you guys are doing great. You're kicking butt. Um, I'd imagine you probably have helped thousands, if not tens of thousands of people do deals in real estate at this point, you know, with the software and the app. So that's amazing. So cool. Yeah, it's been a great humbling journey because I was selfish. I just built it for myself. <laughs> but then to be able to help other people with it was a nice, pleasant surprise. That's been awesome. Man, that's so, so cool. That's so cool. Um, all right, cool. So we got Kevin on the on the call here today as well. Kevin, Hi, Kevin. welcome. We're happy you're here. Um, I have a baby in the NICU. My wife and I had our first child about, well, she's one month old today. Um, and she came 10 weeks early. So we have been very, very preoccupied. Uh, just been getting lots of cuddles with her. But she's going to remain in the NICU for 
probably another month before we're going to be able to bring her home. So didn't have a whole lot of time to do a ton of marketing for this, but um, that's okay. We always get a lot of call, a lot of replay watches on on real estate school where this video will be will be hosted and and will remain. Um, so regardless, I'm happy that we're here and I'm really grateful for for David's time. But uh, the whole purpose of real estate school is is to create a community and bring people together, um, help them and make it much more affordable, which is really what we're 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 doing great. We just got our 300th member this morning. So wow. Gonna, Congratulations. Thank you, man. We're, we're going to be growing this. Uh, my goal is to get to 10,000 members right now. It's 47 bucks a month. Uh, at some point we'll, we'll obviously raise that price up, but, um, it's a really, really great program with weekly coaching calls. You know, I've done coaching for seven or eight years now, and, you know, I've charged 10, 12, 15 grand for, for students in the past. And I still have a, a mastermind. That's a higher ticket program. Uh, but I really wanted to build real estate school out for those that, you know, either can't afford that amount, right, or might not need the full gamut of of tools that that you may need or or get with with a higher ticket mastermind. You know, real estate school has been has been phenomenal, and we're having a lot of fun with it. So, again, that's where this is going to be hosted. But again, the whole reason why I even went down that little rabbit hole there, guys, I'm sorry, is um, it's really a more interactive type of of podcast or community or, or training. Um, so Kevin, do you have any questions about Deal Machine for Mr. David Lecco, for me? Um, are you using it yet? What's up, man? Talk to us. Yeah. Yeah, I want to ask David. So um, on the app, I assume I can, if I'm driving for dollars or if I just happen to see a property I like, I can punch it into the app. And can I send mail? Yes. Just Absolutely. to that address? Yes, you can. You can one off send it. You can set up a sequence to send them, you know, a postcard and you can play around with the sequences. So you can send them a postcard every three weeks, every six weeks, every eight weeks. You can have it set to send two. You can have it set to send one. You can have it set to send 20. You can even change up the mail pieces within the sequence. So you can have a letter go out first. And then a month later, you can have a postcard go out. You can uh, you can pull uh, an image from Google Maps if you don't want to take your own photo. Or you can not have a photo at all and just create your own postcard, right? So you can you can have tons of different options with it. Um, so yeah, sending mail like the options are basically endless. So, Great question, um, um, David from Deal Machine. What's your last name? I just put Lecco. it down. Yeah, Lecco. Lecco okay. L e c k o. Uh, so and then when when I pull up the property on my phone. Um, uh, then do I get to establish or do I get the, uh, do I get the filters for what it is that it's possibly vacant, that it's possibly in pre foreclosure, that it's possible, you know, do I get all those parameters that I, so I can target hundred percent? Um, I could show you if you wanted to. Oh, it'd be awesome. Yeah. And I, I do really like I was your pulling questions. it up on my end, but I'm actually, if it's okay with you, I'm going to let you drive David. Yeah, I just need the screen sharing there you go. ability. There you go. Thank you. Yes, sir. One second. So, uh, Kevin, are you using Deal Machine yet? Have you signed up for it yet? No. Okay. No, cool. I have not. But I'm going to send you a link to use real quick. I'm going to. I'll add it into school, but I'm also going to add it into the chat here. This link right here will get you a free trial to start playing around with it. And um, I think does the link get you like a 50% discount the first month or something like that too, David, or is it deal credits? No, it gives or... you like 50 free postcards. Oh, okay. So you, there you yeah. go. So you get 50 credits that you can use. Uh, you used to be able to use this on nice. skip tracing, but you don't need to use them on skip tracing anymore because it's included, which is freaking awesome and the best in the business. Uh, but you can use, it's 50 free postcards. I'm looking at the site now too. Um, so you can use those to send some mail to some motivated sellers. One thing I always suggest is send yourself a mailer right away so you can actually get it delivered to your home and get it in your hands. And it's not that people don't believe that it's real, but when they get it mailed to themselves, they really get excited and it encourages them, <laughs> encourages them to get their right. butt off the couch and to get out there and to start driving for dollars, um, so on and so forth. Yeah. And I, I just to answer your question, Kevin, if um, if you were driving and you saw this property you could click it 
Um, and this is just a random property, by the way, that I picked. And so immediately you could see what well, is off market and is owned by a senior owner who's older than 65. And the owners are Scott and Sharon Frazier. And they are the owner and resident. And uh, there's Scott and Sharon. And so you specifically, well, we could see Sharon is 75 years old. And she has two properties. Uh, well, actually, this it looks like it's just a glitch where it's both both of the same property listed twice. But here is her phone number, landline and wireless. There's all of her emails. And it uh, looks like she's got a high school education. Then, of course, here's her husband, Scott. He's two years younger. So Scott likes older women, it looks like. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know. Sometimes if you find similar things with uh, somebody you're you're doing business with, that helps. I, I don't know what your preferences are, but just thought that was worth mentioning. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, damn, I mean, it looks like they've done a good job saving and planning for retirement here, you know. Uh, and then I don't know who Jason is, but there's Sharon again and uh, Jason, maybe their son, you know, who's 45, for example. So. That's just an example of how the unlimited contact info. You can look at contact info and you can see their son uh, lives in in Lebanon, Indiana. So it's a little bit uh, an hour away, something. And his email is fat boy Frazier. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you asked about mail. So you can just press start mail, by the way. And uh, it's going to send a lot of options uh that you have here but we could do one off we could do a whole sequence um and i'm gonna show you what that looks like here uh but i yeah yeah hold on okay yeah there we go so my default is just this basic postcard and if you're in front of the property you can actually take a photo so it'll be better than this google photo it just says if you're interested in selling call me have a great day but uh you you, you do have a lot of options um so if i wanted to change that um you know, these are, these are several other templates, um, that we have available. Um, so there's and, lots and lots of different templates in here, which is yeah, exactly. So this one's a bigger size even, right? This one is, uh, you could see four by six, you could see six by nine, six by 11. And then this is even a ballpoint, uh, letter that you could send, um, where it's like handwritten by a robot, uh, just an example there. So you could see, mm -hmm. Um, does that answer your question about the mail? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I would say, Kevin, go ahead and play with it. Get the free trial. Start playing with it. Send yourself some mail. Um, basically, I'd, I would say probably within 10 or 15 minutes, you can set it up. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Right. But you're going to you're like the way I do it is when I'm out driving for dollars, I don't need to go in and click send mail. minutes. You can set it up. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Right. But you're going to. You're like the way I do it is when I'm out driving for dollars, I don't need to go in and click send mail on every lead. I just basically create a list that any lead that gets added to it, it automatically turns on mail and it adds them to a sequence. So typically what I'll do is I would for my driving for dollars is I'll add these leads to a sequence that will mail them every 30 days and I'll send them mail four five or six times every 30 days. All right. Sometimes I'll even go in after that sequence has ended and start it over again. Right. You can change the frequency as much as you want. Some people like to do it, you know, every 21 days. Some people like to do it every 45 days. I just typically choose 30 days. And every time, you know, that I want to add a lead from driving for dollars, it gets automatically added to a sequence. You can see that first column there is steps. And then uh, you can create how many steps or you can create a new sequence in there. So I'll typically just send them, you know, four to six postcards, space them out about a month at a time. And then if somebody calls in and they and, and, and you've made contact with them, then you can actually just go in and search that person's name or property address and you can end the sequence. There's really no reason to send mail to somebody after you're getting them on the phone. Right, right. now, you can send mail to follow up with people if you if you can't no longer get them on the phone or they're just ghosting you. That happens sometimes, too. And you can just start the mail back up again really quickly. Um, so you can manually go in and click start mail on, on particular leads, individual leads, or all your leads. 
Uh, but if you set it up in advance where anytime you add a lead to a particular list that has a sequence built into it as an automation, you don't need to mess with it. You literally just get in your car, go out there and drive for dollars. Um, I would suggest downloading the mobile app, which if you have a subscription, you can you can use that with the same login. Um, and then just get in the car, go drive for an hour or two. You know, in, yeah. in, 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 in certain parts of town, I may drive for an hour and only get five leads because it might be a really nice part of town where people take care of their properties and there's just not that much distressed properties. But there's other times where I'll be out and I'll drive for an hour and I'll get 150 leads. You know, and that's obviously going to be in areas where people don't have as much affluency and, you know, and, and there's a lot more properties that are going to be in distress. So it really depends, you know, on how many leads you're going to be able to add in an hour or two hours time is going to depend on what kind of part of town you're in, what neighborhood you're in. And if you get, you know, more leads, then you're going to be able to get more mail out the door, you know? So, so, so let me ask this. Um, so I like that you, you backed up a step, even before you send mail, you're, when you're out driving, you're just building your list. What is your process for building your list when you're driving? Is it as simple as you tap on a house or do you have to put in the address? No, yeah, you just, you just tap, tap on a house. You just tap on a house. So there's actually two or three. I think there's three different different settings uh, for that. I love, and David, I got to give you big props for this setting because this is probably, I mean, outside of the unlimited skip tracing and the dialer, I mean, let's be clear and obvious, those are amazing settings. But the tap to add feature is literally one of my favorite features within Deal Machine. So you can go in and I don't know if you can do this on the website. I'm sure you can, but on the mobile app, it's so simple. You literally click the settings button and there's like three options and you just click tap to add. But what that allows you to do is as you're driving down the street, you can literally just go in and you can click on the lead and then you don't have to click again. It'll just oh, automatically that, that's, add it. Yeah. That's huge for efficiency. I mean, It'll automatically a little bit add of, it. It's a little bit of driving for dollars that I've done. I've always gotten frustrated. Oh, I got to stop, get out my notebook, write down an address. You know, this is, so yep. this is huge for efficiency. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Um, it definitely does save a lot of time. I noticed because, because I was doing the same thing, Kevin. So let me show you. Um, Oops, sorry guys. So this is the mobile app and uh, I could just tap it to uh, view the lead and add it here in two steps. But now what David was talking about was tap to add properties. So I don't know if you can read this, but it's a setting on the mobile app that if you click it, uh, now it's turned on, basically one single tap will add a property now. Uh, so I clicked it um, and that second one, third one, those are automatically added as soon as I tap them. Uh, and so they're being added to my account just by tapping it with that feature on. So you don't have to double tap your screen. Does that make sense? Very yeah. cool. Thanks. Hey, David, let me take over the screen share just for one second. I want to show you guys, and you might actually like this, David. This is actually pretty cool. I haven't done this in a long time just because I just have been really, really busy. Uh, but I used to live stream my driving for dollars over on my YouTube channel. And I had a camera set up in my car that would just kind of face forward. But I screen shared on the right side. Oh, wow. This might not might not be super clear here. But you can actually see where I'm at. And I'll just kind of speed up to kind of get Dude, more that's into cool. the neighborhood. So here's an example here where I'm making a left-hand turn at a cul-de-sac. You can see this is turning. So this is a really good way to kind of demonstrate what the mobile app looks like here, right? Um, but as I add, see these ones here that are like kind of green or, or whatnot? Those are properties that I've added. There it gets a little clearer now. And you can see I'm just driving through a neighborhood. And I'm, you know, looking for properties. And let's go. So you can see it'll track, it'll trace your route to Kevin, which is really, really cool. And as you turn, the map turns. So literally, I'll just mount this to my dashboard. And obviously here, I have a camera mounted up there too, and a laptop and a bunch of additional equipment. But whenever I'm just driving for dollars and I'm not streaming to YouTube, I just have my camera mounted up on my dashboard and I just turn it on and it will it will center you in the screen. And as you turn and go around a corner, the map will turn, boom, just like that. And then as I, I see properties that I want, I literally just click on the black dots. Let's see if we can't find one where I do it. Let's speed ahead a little here. So now I'm on a little faster road, it's getting into a neighborhood. 
going around a little cul-de-sac. And I'm usually just listening to music, as you can tell, driving around looking for distressed properties. And as I find them, and I'm in there talking a little too, kind of teaching as I go, but boom, there's one right there. And then you can see here, I'll back this one up. So this is a great example. Watch, I find a property. I'm out driving for dollars. I get to the end here. I see it. And sometimes I'll like point, sometimes I'll grab the camera and move it or I'll actually just point my car right at it. Boom, look at this. Now I'm like, ooh, I like this one. The fence is all screwed up. It's got overgrown. You could tell the roof's kind of dated. And I just clicked on the map right there. Boom, and it added it. That's it. I'm done. That person got mail from me because this video was created. I mean, shit, this was four years ago when I did this. But yeah, it's no it's different. So cool. Doing it doing it then versus doing it today, it's no different. So, and that's it. So I have this set with tap to add mode, as you can see right here. We're going to go ahead and kill the music there. I have it set to tap to add mode. And then um, I think I have my 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 phone zoomed in just a hair. But you can you can have it to where you stay in the middle. And as you turn, I'm going to make a left-hand turn. Watch the map. It'll spin. Boom. So you can keep you in the middle. So you're not having to constantly be scrolling or zooming in or zooming out. You just zoom it in right to where you can see the numbers really, really easily. And then it's tracing your route, too. How cool is that? So... The reason that you want to trace your route is, is you don't want to, I'll, I'll quit that screen share. You guys get the point. Um, the reason that you don't want to, or that you want to trace the route so you're not driving the same neighborhood last week and this week. But one of the, another, one of the most amazing features that David has built out in his team is zero to six months, that route will be green. Six months to 12 months, I believe that route turns like uh, orange or yellow. And then uh, 12 to 18 months, it becomes red. And then after 18 months, it falls off because after 18 months, a lot of things change. So you're going to probably want, there you go right there. You're going to, oh, 12 to 24. I'm sorry. I screwed that up, but it doesn't matter. That's, the, that's the best frequency right there. After 24 months, that neighborhood have, could completely change. Trees could have fallen down. Houses could have burned down. New buildings could have went up. So after 24 months, it, it, it removes those lines from the map. So you can go out and you can drive them again. But if you're in a densely populated neighborhood, and I think I might even be able to find a, an area on my screen, like usually towards the end of my drives, I'll zoom out. I didn't, I don't have it on this one, but, you, but I'll zoom out and you can see that I'll just basically cover the map. I'll paint it and I'll hit a whole neighborhood. And if there's a street or two that I didn't get, I can easily know, all right, cool. I got all these over here on this side of town. I need to go over to this part of the neighborhood and hit these two or three. And it just makes for an easy and amazing approach to, to doing this. So you can see down at the bottom, you have North always up. Those little tabs right there. This, um, I don't know if it's on the actual desktop version. I think it's on the mobile version. Yeah, it's on the mobile version, but I don't typically do North always up. That can be a good option for certain people for sure. But I like to, I like the map to turn oh, as I'm, yeah, right there. North always up. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's fine. If you're looking at the map, maybe that's helpful. Right. But whenever I'm in the car using my app and I use the app more so than I use the, the desktop version, uh, but they're both great by all means. Uh, but as I turn, I want the map to turn. So I literally don't even have to touch the thing. Once I turn deal machine on and I configure the two or three settings, which takes about 10 seconds, I don't have to touch the screen until I see a house I want. And then I literally just touch on it. And then I'm back facing the road. I've, I've been in two car accidents driving for dollars. I backed into a guy one time and I smoked a curb another time. And both times I wasn't using the app. So I, I can't, I cannot express enough like, Hey, these features are all great, but even beyond all that, like this makes the process of driving for dollars much more safe. When you're trying to write down addresses and you're in a car moving, like that is dangerous. That is really, really dangerous. But being able to just go like this and then I'm back on the road, hands on the wheel. I mean, you, it doesn't get much more safe than that, right? So, awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Did uh, I know that you need to go soon, um, but I was wondering if you wanted me to show how to build a list and how yeah, to Yeah, let's call. do that. I'm not in a big hurry. I got another 10, 15 minutes here. Let's yeah. let's do that. Kevin, if you have any questions while Dave is doing this, just shout them out by, by all means. Man, we have a, a small crowd here today, of course, so... No big deal, but I would love to see how to build a list and how to set up a smart list, if you don't mind. That'd be great. 
So, um, Kevin, I invest in Indianapolis. So I've got Indianapolis selected here and it's going to show me all the properties in Indianapolis. Now, a few things that you might be interested in that, that I'm interested in is tax delinquent expired listings and tired landlords. I just pulled the tax delinquent list from 2023. 20, uh, There's about 1,700 properties in 2023 that didn't pay their taxes yet. So I ended up doing a deal, getting one off of that. And uh, it was like a Utah orthodontist who bought a bunch of properties in Indianapolis. And he partnered with a contractor that just left him high and dry. He's making quite a bit of money as an orthodontist, but these properties just kind of became a, a headache for him. So he sold one to me for 20,000 less than what he paid for it actually. And that was part of the problem I think with the contractor was he bought it too high. Um, and so he didn't want to keep paying taxes as well as all this. And, you know, tax payments, when you own a house cash, they don't get paid all the time either. So he was literally just busy. <laughs> probably just forgot to pay his taxes. So anyway, I got a great deal from that. That's why it's a great list. I always recommend. Um, but let me show you how to select all those again. So there's a lot of quick lists like that um, that you might want to choose. And well, so first and okay. foremost, go to yeah. go to the map where you want to invest. And yeah, then when you I, start selecting right. the list, it's going to narrow in on what's visible. So don't right. zoom into a neighborhood and do this because it's only going to then show you that I mean, unless you want to get really, really niche. Yeah. So there's 11,000 uh, on the tax delinquent years. That's over three years by default. Um, if you wanted to narrow it down, you could go to more filters and you Wait, can I just ask? So, so, um, and David, you're, you're showing me this, how I could do it on mobile. The mobile is the same way as the desktop. So, so what I'm showing okay. you, you could do it on either one. And then, and then David Dodge, you, you made a point, but I'm not sure I understood it when you, when you said the difference between how you pick your area first or what. Yeah. So I actually just noticed, look at the very bottom of the screen here. David already has Indianapolis already selected. Yeah. Right there. Exactly. So you can see that little draw on the map thing that, 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 well, I guess that's on my zoom, not on his thing. You can draw on the map and like draw a circle around a a county, a city, a municipality, a neighborhood, or you can just type in a city, a municipality, a zip code. Like the, the way in which you can search is, I mean, it would take us an hour to go through every possibility because there's basically every possibility you want you could search by. So I always suggest search zip codes, search county, search city or municipality. Those are going to be your easiest ways, right? So start by doing that. You can uh, use the search bar at the top to get that in there. And then from there, you're going to click that little drop down at the top where he's kind of hovering over to get to the tax delinquents. Um, and yeah, it works a little better when you don't have the satellite because it's just easier to see. Uh, but they work great both ways. You can draw on the map like he's doing now. Yeah. So here I'm drawing just a random area. So in this area, uh, we've got a 164 properties and... I was going to show you tax delinquent. tax delinquent year is, uh, let's say, equal to 2022, for example. And so that would narrow that down for you. Now, what we would do is say build list once we've selected our criteria. And that should take just a second to uh, build. Now I can click view list and it's going to open it up as a tab here. So... Um, I've got 63 leads. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I got 25, 64, but then you did the tax delinquent to that year. So it went to 63. Yeah. Uh, correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, well, I also have a filter applied, so I'm now filtering the properties from that 164. I think to, um, does the contact have a phone number? Is the contact likely the owner? Cause Remember when we looked at Scott and his wife, Sharon, they were the owners, but renters will show up there too. You can mm -hmm. call a renter. Um, and then last call date uh, is unknown because I wanted to show you, if that's okay, how you sure. could actually call people um, yeah, on the list. And if you've got time, I'd love to run through 10 properties because if we get, in my experience, if you call 10, at least one is actually going to answer. So yeah, I, I selected all 25 here. Now I just clicked call. 
And this is all doing this right from the computer here. So you don't need any additional phone. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Three, one, seven, 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 one, seven, zero, eight is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Joshua, my name is David Lecko. I know this is out of the blue, but I was calling about your property on Newman Street. Wanted to see if you'd consider an offer. Completely understand if there's no interest, but if you could just call me back either way, that way I don't keep bugging you. Uh, I'd appreciate it. My number is 765-232-3331. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So there you go. A uh, couple things that I showed you here. Um, well, you can just call from the computer. Also, the uh, there's a transcript that happens in real time. And you could press, what do I say? The AI gave me a suggested voice message, for example. And then as I read it, that it was also transcribing what I read. Um, so it, it store, I can open this property up by just clicking that address. So in the activity, like I could see the full transcript, outgoing call. Um, but then I also have a summary here of what happened. So it's like That's shorter cool. than the transcript. And then uh, it, it told me I left a voicemail. So I don't need to click my CRM, like what status this lead is. Um, it, it basically just did that for me. So I'll, I'll do awesome. a couple more if you guys have time. Yeah, definitely. That's all. It, this is so cool. And I, and I get a, a questions a lot, like, uh, in the community just earlier today, um, uh, somebody was like, I don't, it was Anissa. She's like, I don't know what to Your say. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. Solves that problem the person you. you're trying to reach is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up. Hey, Joshua, uh, this is David Lecko. I just wanted to let you know um, I'd love to buy your property on Newman Street. Uh, if you're interested or not, just let me know either way. That way I don't keep bugging you. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye. So let me let me try one more. We've got a few numbers for Josh. We're, we're, we're hitting him on all his numbers. <laughs> That's all good. The Tuckers. Can't take your call now. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, simply hang up or press the pound key for further options. Hey, Josh, this is David. I was calling about your property on Newman Street. Was wondering if you'd be interested in selling that property. If so, I could make you an offer. And just let me know either way. That way, I don't keep bugging you. Thanks so much and look forward to hearing back from you. Bye-bye. So it's important to, to say um, when you leave a voicemail, in my experience, uh, to say, well, call me back either way. That way I can keep bugging you because we're not telemarketing because we're not trying to sell any services. But if we were telemarketing and people mistake us for telemarketing all the time is you want you need an opt out mechanism. So that's why I say it that way. Does that make sense? Yep. Makes perfect sense. And I love doing that too, because it also gives them a reason to call you back so they can essentially, if they're not interested in selling, they can essentially avoid, um, you know, getting called again. But regardless, it gives you the ability to talk to them. And sometimes I'll talk to a seller that says, yeah, I'm not interested in selling that one, but they call me back because I, I say that in the voicemails too. Uh, but then I'll say, oh, okay, hey, no problem. Do you have any other properties? And they'll be like, well, yeah, actually, now that you mention it, I don't want to sell the one on Maple Avenue, but I got one on Pine. Right. It's like, great. When can you meet me? I'd love to come take a look at the one on Pine. I don't give a right. shit about the one on Maple. I'll buy the one on Pine or, you know, Oak Street. Let's go. So, yeah, great, great, great piece of advice right there. Thanks. So, um, yeah, I guess um, let me just check in with you guys and see if there's anything else that you wanted to know about. I could show you more details and depth on the dialer if you wanted to, but this is a good, seems like a good time since we hit all Josh's numbers. Yeah, this is no, enough for I, me because I, I just need to test drive it. I want to get out there and yeah. try it. So uh, I, I'm in. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
David, thank you so much for your time. You can you can stop that screen share for a second here. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you so much for your time and being here today and 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 uh, you know coming in for Matt. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, you know, getting to chat with you here uh, today. Uh, Kevin, check it out. Deal Machine's definitely one of my secret weapons. I mean, I've literally done hundreds of deals, bought dozens of rentals with it. Um, I don't pay for skip tracing anymore. I go to Deal Machine. I pull it up on the app. I pull it up on my computer at you know my office or at home. Um, you can send mail with it. You can one-off send mail, which is you know like David mentioned earlier, it's you know not easy to do that typically, but you can. You can set up sequences. Uh, you can pull smart lists. We didn't really talk about smart lists, but smart lists are really great because I can say, hey, show me all the vacant or absentee owned properties in six three one two one, a zip code that I invest in, um, and then as properties be you know get added to that list, it'll notify me. Right. So I can then I can then set it up on that smart list to just mail everybody on that list. And then I can also have it set up to where if somebody gets added to that list, they start getting mailed too. So you can do this with all the different types of filters, vacants, absentees, tax delinquents. Um, I mean, there's probably 20 or 30 options in there that you can go through and you can select. Uh, but at the end of the day, I want to make something very, very clear. This is a marketing business. If you're not doing any marketing, if you're not you're not getting people on the phone. Like what is marketing, right? Marketing, in my opinion, is just a fancy word for getting people on the phone. That's all it means, right? So if you're not doing any marketing, you're not sending out any postcards, you know, or, or buying advertisements online or making calls to people like David just did, you're going to have a very tough time in this business doing anything. You got to get people on the phone. Deal Machine makes that easy for you. You can generate lists, you can build lists, you can create smart lists, or you can make your own lists from the driving for dollars efforts that you can go out and you can do, you know, physically in your car. Uh, they also have a feature in here. I don't use it very often, but I have used it, you know, a lot of times uh, where you can virtually drive for dollars. So there's, I mean, the options are endless to, um, to go about building lists. But again, I want to make this very clear. Just because you go out and build a list doesn't mean you're doing any marketing. You have to then start calling that list or send mail to that list. So they know, hey, Kevin, Dave, or David is looking to buy their home. So make sure that you don't forget to do the marketing. And David, we know you're the real deal on this because you showed a photograph of yourself like standing in your kitchen with a stack of mail about this big <laughs> when you when you used to send out individual pieces of mail. So <laughs> for sure, hey, I listen, do. So I gotta send go. it out. Yeah, no problem. I Kevin. Thank you, uh, David Dodge. Uh, prayers are with you and your family. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The little baby. I uh, I had a daughter that spent some time in the NICU myself, so I know what that's like um she's doing we'll, great we'll, we'll, yeah awesome all right thanks david Lucko. thank hey you guys Kevin. thanks for being here to today you. thanks for being a part of real estate school i'll post this replay in the community david again thank you for your time have a great rest of your day and enjoy your week and that's it guys signing off you too bye david bye hey, kevin boys. thanks